Today, I'm going to show you how to make this table out of Pecky Sinker Cypress. Stay tuned, I'll show you how I did it. So the first step was to remove the soft and damaged wood from the pecky pockets or the pecky cavities. I primarily accomplished this by scraping as much of the wood out as I possibly could with my wood carving tools. As you can tell, this was quite a time consuming process because many of the soft pockets that were caused by the pecky fungus were much longer and deeper than I anticipated. I scraped each pocket on both sides of each board and used my shop vac to remove the debris. It may have been a little bit easier to use an air compressor and blow out each pocket after scraping, but that didn't really occur to me at the time. Once all the debris was removed, it was time to break out the belt sander and the orbital sander to get the two sides of each board as smooth as possible. I started with 150 grit sandpaper on the belt sander and I finished with 220 grit sandpaper on the orbital sander. Now that the boards were sanded and cleaned, it was time to square the sides of the boards in preparation um, for them to be joined together. So I used my table saw to rip an equal amount off of each board to make the table exactly 36 inches wide. The three slabs lined up fairly nicely, but I was a bit concerned about which joinery method would be best to use in this scenario. A few of the pecky pockets in the wood tunneled the entire length of the board and pretty close to the edge. I figured the strength of the table would be at risk if I used pocket holes or any other type of joinery method to join the pieces near one of these tunnels. I decided to use biscuits to join the three slabs because I can place the biscuits in solid parts of each board and the width of the number 20 biscuits provided some extra stability. But most importantly, I had an excuse to go buy a new tool because I did not own a biscuit joiner. So it took me a little while to figure out where to put the biscuits and um, how many to use. I decided to use six, six biscuits per join um, that left me with 12 total. There were a few biscuits um, that were visible on the underside of the table, but that was the best I could do. So there were some uh, pretty minor creases in between the boards uh, where I joined them together. So I lightly sanded the surface one more time, but I elected to use the dust bag attachment that came with the sander instead of connecting my sander um, to my dust collection system as I normally do. So I mixed the, all the sawdust that was in the bag with glue in a clear plastic cup to a putty-like consistency. Then I liberally spread the mixture over the creases and gently wiped off the excess with a popsicle stick. I lightly sanded the surface of the table one more time to remove the excess glue and dust mixture and the creases pretty much disappeared. I used a damp towel to wipe the surface in order to raise the grain of the wood a small amount. I used a tack cloth to wipe down the table to remove all of the loose debris. So now to the tedious part. I flipped the tabletop over and began taping the indentations and pockets with um, some tin foil tape or what some like to refer to as HVAC tape um, to pull the epoxy at the bottom to fill the cavities and prevent the resin from dripping through when poured on the top. Now that the tabletop was all prepped and ready to go, it was time for me to start my first mixture of epoxy uh, to apply the seal coat to the top of the table. I started by mixing a one-to-one -one ratio of resin and hardener that totaled eight ounces. I knew this was a fairly small amount, but I wanted to make sure that I got the hang of it before jumping to a larger amount. I mixed the ingredients together until the mixture was completely clear. So I poured the mixture onto the tabletop and I worked it in with a rubber squeegee. Due to the size of the material that I mixed, I was only able to cover about a third of the table. When I was done with each batch, I pulled out the blowtorch to remove any potential bubbles that were um, caught in the mixture. 
So I repeated the process um, to complete the seal coat, but this time I included a little bit more material um, in this mixture so I can uh, complete the table in one batch um, instead of doing two more batches. And I used the blowtorch to remove any of the bubbles of the excess material that dropped into the pockets. And it's important to note that um, when I used the blowtorch, I tried to stay anywhere from four to six inches away from the material. I moved on to the fill coat. The purpose of the fill coat is to ensure the pockets are filled with material to make the table as level as possible. I used the rubber squeegee to work the material across the surface of the table. And this step, of course, um, took a lot more material than the seal coat did. And again, I used the blowtorch to remove as many of the bubbles as I possibly could while keeping the flame four to six inches away from the surface of the table. I applied the excess epoxy um, using a chip brush to a 1x3 that I had. Um, I plan on using this um, as part of the table base, um, as you'll see later in the video. Since I let this coat dry for more than four hours and I wanted to achieve a flat uniform surface, it was time to sand. I started by sanding with 120 grit paper with a belt sander uh, to knock down the larger buildups. Um, I then used an orbital sander with 220 grit sandpaper to smooth out the surface a bit. I then carefully wiped down the surface with acetone. Please note, do not use any kind of paint thinner. Um, you can only use acetone to do this. I was actually a bit worried after I sanded the epoxy because it turned to a hazy white color and the imperfections were a lot more visible but all this goes away once the flood coat is applied. I mixed the flood coat in two batches to make sure I could adequately stir the mixture. I poured the flood coat slowly to make sure it covered half of the tabletop. As soon as I poured the first batch for half of the table, I began to mix the second batch to finish the other half of the table as I wanted it to blend and merge well together. When I was done applying the flood coat, it was time to get the blowtorch out and uh, get all the excess bubbles out of uh, the final coat. Um, more than any other step, this step is very important um, on this stage of the project uh, to remove as many of the bubbles as you possibly can. So I took some extra time to do this correctly. I allowed the table to dry for 48 hours and then I flipped it over to start removing all the tape. Gosh, this was a very tedious process. There were quite a few pieces of tape that were pretty stubborn, so I had to uh, go get the belt sander out um, to get all of those excess pieces off that would not come off um, by simply peeling them. I used a brush to remove the large debris and then came over the top with a tack cloth um, to remove any remaining debris from the underside. I used this oil and urethane top coat and sealer uh, from General Finishes to seal the bottom of the table um, and to bring out any grain uh, without having to sacrifice the natural color of the wood. To be honest, I would have used this coat on the top of the table or this finish on the top of the table um, if I plan to keep the table. Um, but I was making this for my mother-in-law and she preferred the glossy finish um, of the epoxy. I only had to put one coat of the sealer on the bottom of the table and um, it was pretty easy to apply and turned out really nicely. So I started building the table bottom out of some untreated 4x4s that I purchased from the local big box store. Uh, these guys were in really rough shape so I ran them through my planner to sort of smooth out um, the surfaces and uh, square off all the edges on the 4x4s. Originally I was going to do sort of an H type of design 
for the table supports, but I decided that that sort of looked a bit boring. So I measured uh, to cut four 45 degree support arms for each support bracket, which uh, came to eight arms um, or eight support arms total. I glued each piece in place and used my nail gun to secure them. I then pre-drilled four pilot holes in each brace and used screws. I decided to distress the wood a bit before staining, um, which consisted of just trying to use various hand tools uh, to just beat it up a little bit to get that worn look. So I clamped each support brace together to find any uneven spots and then I used my Japanese saw um, to trim off the excess. I then attached two foot pads per brace in order to raise it off the ground a bit. So I decided to use a 2x4 to connect the two braces together. I used my hand planer to uh, plane down the two sides um, to just get it as straight as possible. I then used my pocket hole jig to drill two pocket holes in each side and attach them to the table. I then filled the pocket holes with paint grade pocket plugs and glue and trimmed down the excess. So I decided to use the Pro Series wiping stain by Minwax. I needed a stain that would be thicker in order to prevent dripping and provide me with a bit more control over the staining process. I applied the stain to approximately half of one of the support braces and then I wiped it down. I repeated this process three more times. So when the staining process was complete, I attached that one by three that I had mentioned a bit earlier in the video to sort of add a little bit more character to the table. So I had really no idea up to this point how I was going to secure the table to the braces without having to drill holes in the table. I also knew I needed to make the tabletop removable in case my in-laws needed to relocate the table in the house or if I needed to make a small repair to it. So I chose to make an outline of the upper 4x4s out of scrap 1x2s and glue them in place to the bottom of the table. So I then stained the 1x2s with the same stain that I used um, on the table support braces. So that way they would be very, very hard to see um, once the table went on top of the braces. Here are a few still shots of the completed table. I do have to say that it turned out pretty good. Um, it took me a very long time to complete, but that was partly due to the fact that um, I didn't really have any plans to go by, and it was my first time dealing with epoxy on a tabletop. And I definitely learned a lot through this whole process of building this table, which is very important to me. If you would like more detail on how I built this table, please check out my blog. The link is in the description. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button in the lower part of your screen. I also included a link to my blog which contains more details about this project. Again, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch. As always, imagine, create, share.